This is a fake ear, and today it's gonna help us learn something. So this is a super cheap flat plate measurement rig that I built a few years ago. The ear is a bit of an addition to it, but this is a Dayton EMM6 and a yoga block. A lot of times when I want to take just a general rough estimate of what a headphone measure is like, I'll put it on this thing and use Room EQ Wizard with some heavy calibration to measure the headphone. Now this isn't the perfect system, um, but it just kind of helps to get a general idea of what's going on. It's worth noting that Measurements are a very heavily debated subject. There's a whole lot of different standards to adhere to and none are really perfect, uh, but a lot of things are definitely better than flat plates with maybe some debate about the mini DSP ears, which tend to have a lot of problems from what I've seen around the four kilohertz area. So this has been ghetto rigged to have a silicon ear on the side, as you can see. And I did this for a very specific reason. See, I have gauges right here on my ears. These are a size double zero and I use silicone gauges. A lot of people have asked me, DMS, do those things in your ears change frequency response? And while I've always said no, they don't, I've never noticed a difference because I've tried with many different types of materials, many different sizes, all kinds of things to see if I can notice a difference and I can't. I wanted to make sure that I'm not crazy and I wanted to see if I could back that up. So I took this rig, put an ear on it, measured one pair of headphones a crap ton of times, then went back in, put a gauge through this headphone, I used little tapers to size it up and put a piece in here, and then measured that same pair of headphones a crap ton more times with different gauges of different materials, including plugs. And the results were interesting. So I'm not going to make you guys wait forever. Let's jump right into how this was done and what the results were. Now, this is a raw pass of the AKG K371 with this setup. Now, the same pair of headphones measures like this when it is actually calibrated. So we can see there's a clear difference here between the calibrated flat plate and the non-calibrated flat plate with this ear added onto it. Now, I haven't changed any of the calibration since adding this ear onto here uh, because I just want to observe changes between the ear and having the ear with the gauge, not specifically an accurate direct frequency response. So with the K371 on this rig, after a ton of passes, this is what I averaged. Obviously, this is not entirely accurate to what the headphone sounds like. This is an uncalibrated ear, but this is what we have with the ear with no gauge at all, no plugs, nothing in it. And then this is what it was like with silicon double zero gauges in. There's no change. In fact, even after all the variants that I could try and find with repositioning, I couldn't get it to really be any different from the regular ear. Now where this gets interesting is when I tried this with plugs and surgical steel tunnels. Now a double zero is not a very big gauge as you guys can see right here. This isn't huge. I've been told by some people that this is the biggest size you can go up to to where you can take them out and they'll just heal back up on their own one day. And that's why I haven't got any bigger than this. I'm perfectly content with them the way they are. And I'm glad to note the silicon that I use doesn't have any changes to frequency response or at least not measurable by my rig. But it seems that other gauges can. Plugs specifically having the most dramatic effect because that seems to affect both the highs and the lows, but even surgical steel tunnels decreases the low shelf a little bit, which I find very interesting. As you can see right here, this is the comparison between the stock ear, unchanged, stock ear, what am I talking about? The unchanged ear and the ear with a surgical steel tunnel with K371s. That is an interesting difference in low shelf and it's not what I expected because I would have expected the tunnels to mess more with high frequencies. This is a bit more of a change than I would have expected and I wonder how this would play out in a room with speakers rather than headphones, which I'd like to test if you guys end up liking this video. So if you do, let me know with a like. So I think this really raises more questions than answers, but at least we have some answers. We at least know that silicon tunnels in double zero size do not seem to affect frequency response measurable on my rig at least, maybe on a more sensitive one, but not that I've been able to test so far, which makes me want to dive deeper into this subject. It would seem that harder materials like wood, steel, and plastic that you could use as gauges, tunnels, plugs, etc., can in fact and do seem to slightly change frequency response. 
Maybe this is a good thing, maybe this is a bad thing, and I guess it'll depend on your listening preferences. However, if you're working in audio and or going for accuracy, I don't think I would recommend using non-silicon tunnels or gauges. Or just do what I do when you're mixing, either use silicon or just take them out of your ears. Better safe than sorry, right? If anything, the only change I've ever actually really noticed with my silicon tunnels is that some headphones don't tend to fit as well because, well, I got these big things in. Now, I don't usually wear these when I'm testing, so if I'm testing comfort for a, pretty much any headphone, I'll take these out. That way it's not affecting my results for comfort for a more generalized audience because I know all of you don't have these. But outside of that, I wear them on a daily basis and oftentimes when I go to an audio show and people ask me, hey, do those affect the sound? I kind of forget that I have them in my ear until someone mentions it. So next time somebody asks me if these affect my frequency response in my ears or my ability to hear, I can at least show them a graph. But I also think it means it's time to probably upgrade the measurement rig. Let's go for another level of accuracy. I'm gonna see what I can whip up a lot of people are switching to the mini DSP ears, but I feel like we can probably take this a step further. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. Oh, by the way, there's a review coming out on these Gershman speakers as well as this big old Luxman amp. So make sure you guys stick around, subscribe, because you don't want to miss that. It has been an amazing experience. And I think next on the schedule after this is the Hyphman Edition XX, or maybe it's the Vanatu T1s. I'll have to look and find out. Either way, you'll see that one soon. So guys, that's all I have for you today. If you liked this video, please leave a like down below and a comment letting me know other things you would like to see tested and experimented on in the future. If you wanna join the discussion, you can check out the link in the description for our community forum, Hi-Fi Guides, and don't forget to stick around and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Until the next one, guys. Peace.